Sometimes a bass player's job isn't just to play. You gotta keep those guitars in check. Metal Bass Monday. So channel update for the week. Uh, I'm gonna be putting out something this week on how to start understanding the components that go into your favorite sounds and your favorite bassist tones and how to be able to get those with your gear instead of just having to go buy the latest new gadget. Really get inside of it. Understand how the EQ is shaped, uh, what things they're doing so you can do your own version of it and get a much better understanding of how your favorite tones work and how to get there faster. There will be a secondary video up for my patrons. As always, thank you to all of you. And that one's going to go much deeper into tone shaping, uh, things on how to model EQs, how to basically get a, a digital thumbprint of what's going on with a player's tone and be able to extract a lot of information out of it. It's going to be a really cool deep dive, so that'll be coming up for you guys. And as always, thanks so much. If you want to get in on some of the other videos, lessons and things that I have, Patreon and subscribe to star links down below. Love to see you there. I hope you enjoy the additional content. Now, a while back, I debuted a new segment, which isn't going to be of the week every week, but it was something where I get a suggestion that turns out to be pretty weak. So that's why I decided to call it the suggestion of the week. Got one from a few people this week, and this one caught me off guard. Before we dive too deep, I uh, want to revisit, and I've talked about on the channel, the difference between fingers and pick and the validity of each approach and everything. And if you've watched the show at all, you know that uh, I don't have a preference in either one. Uh, I happen to be a fingerstyle player. I do use pick on occasion, but most of the time I'm a fingerstyle player. I don't have one of those weird tribal prejudices <laughs> against either technique. And if you see my show Metal Bass Microscope, where I talk about famous players and ones that had an effect on me, guys like Dee Dee Verney, Dave Ellefson, both pick players had a big effect on my sound. Uh, but there's also you know, a number of other players' finger style that I've ad adapted my tone from too. So I don't really come from a you have to do this, have to do that kind of thing. It's whatever gets the job done and you have to make the right choice for your personal style. Now having said that, I got a lot of requests this week about whether I'd be demoing a plugin called Mammoth, which was a distorted plugin because a lot of people had seen it over on Christian Cola's channel. If you haven't checked out Christian's channel and you're a guitar player, I recommend it. Uh, his comparisons, especially like on speakers and alternatives to the V30 are just uh, fantastic stuff and he definitely knows what he's doing with it. Unfortunately, <laughs> He also proved something that I said quite a while back. If you've watched some of the Mondays where I talk about pick and finger style, I mentioned a certain type of person that you would run into on a regular basis that would try and affect your decision making. And it always seems to be this guitar player slash producer slash engineer. It's always one of these I do everything guys. And they will insist that you have to play with a pick that that's the way it has to be and you have to hit hard and you have to play a jazz bass. For some reason, these guys love jazz basses. And it was kind of this straw man I built up, but it seems to be the same thing all the time. And this is why you're gonna to learn to listen to your Uncle Rodney because he has seen the darkness of the past and warns about it coming into the future. And that's what we're seeing right here, unfortunately with Christian. Uh, he goes in and immediately tries to invalidate fingerstyle playing and says that you can't get what he calls dangle out of it. Yeah, any video that starts with a guy trying to recommend his dangle to me, immediate, full stop. Mm -mm, no, nine, yet, no thank you, uh-uh. He does a pick example and then goes on to show, I guess, his finger style, which I'm really hoping was him kind of massively underplaying how it sounds and everything, because if my finger style sounded like a wet ball sack getting drug across strings, I'd probably stick with a pick too. But then he even goes on to mention like Steve Harrison says, yes, I know it exists and doesn't really explain anything past that or why that's a valid argument. And then his final piece on it going, well, pick's just easier because reasons. And 
why not do it, just do it that way? Well, because unless you're a guitar player, not everybody started from the beginning with a pick. So for a finger style player, it's not easier. And two, if all of human history and endeavor has taught us anything, it's the easiest and fastest route on something is always the best and gives the best and most quality results. So the end argument is just that to get these dangling <laughs> tones that he recommends, the only way to do it is with a pick and it's pure garbage. <laughs> it really is. And this is why you never let these guys recommend something to you. I mean, Christian's a great guitar player. A lot of these guys really are, but they really have to start staying in their lane. It, look, we're bass players. We know our job. We got this. Put the blinker on, scoot back into your lane. We're all good. And I mean, if this ridiculous argument is really the case, then why is it that the most requested tones for me to demonstrate to people on the channel, the ones I hear about the most, the most requested ones from like Jack Gibson or Frank Bello or Getty Lee or Steve DiGiorgio or Alex Webster, and I could go on and Steve Harris, they all seem to have one thing in common and I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, so all these guys, pioneers and some of the modern versions of Clank, aggressive tones, how are they the big purveyors of it? But all of them seem to have that one horrible commonality. So again, the argument just doesn't bear up. And at the end too, I think there was one of the comments where he made the, the hacky, overused, overdone joke about, oh, they don't change their strings. Oh, that joke that isn't sad and old and dated. And I, again, I feel like I've heard this before over and over for years when it wasn't funny to begin with. And hey, who doesn't love hearing advice on how to do something from somebody who shows contempt for you? Yeah, so pick her fingers, you choose on it. You do what's right for your sound, but believing the only path to one great metal sound is what these guys keep recommending to you. Uncle Rodney warned you almost a year ago. Go check out the videos. And in those videos, I cover how to do exactly what he's talking about, but doing it with your hands. One of the big clues is you set up your bass differently for finger style because it's different. So in any case, like I said, I recommend Christian's channel for anything guitar. His production stuff is really great. But again, so many times it's guitar to overreach and they think it has big strings. So just out of curiosity, I decided I wanted to do a little experiment. Let's see what happens. So I've put together a few elements here for a super scientific experiment. We have bass, always important. Bass player, even more important. And frighteningly enough, fingers. Let's see what happens. Wait a minute. What kind of studio production trickery is this? What? This can't be happening. No, is somebody dubbing this in? Wait, where's this? Where's this coming from? Is something dangling? I, I don't know. Well, something must be happening here, because not only is this nearly an impossible feat, apparently, according to these guys, but it's also incredibly difficult. It's, I mean... Yeah, I, I need a nap. I, I, I need a break. I need a nap. It's, it, yeah, the, the level of difficulty. Excruciating. Yeah, so I, I've utterly lost this argument of uh, the science shows. Impossible, way overcomplicated. Uh, I have to rethink everything I've ever done. This, this and I, I may be giving up pace. I, this has shattered me completely. 
So ridiculous and hyperbole aside, uh, again, this is something that I've talked about before, and obviously I hit the nail on the head with it, not to slap myself on the back too hard, in that there just seems to be a profile. And I think one of the big problems with this is that a lot of these guys, too, because they're so caught up in production and their primary instrument is guitar, they don't really look at bass as an instrument unto itself. Bass to them is a production tool. It's that thing that fills up production space between the guitar and the drums, and you know, we're basically a human octave pedal for their guitar playing. That really lends to it being strictly just a sonic treatment and not thinking of it as an instrument with an identity unto its own. And that's where the magic of being an actual bass player comes in. We write bass parts, not just sonic noise, to fill out someone's production value. And again, I have nothing against pick players. I use it once in a while. It's a different technique for a different tone. Uh, and as I've mentioned on the channel many a time, D.D. D. Verney from Overkill. Pick player, phenomenal, had a huge effect on my tone. And I still always kind of have him in the back of my mind when I'm dialing in the upper end of the grind on my tone. But it's an individual choice on how you get there and taking advice from someone who's just going to fit the same profile and always just trying to get a job done about your instrument as fast as possible just to finish up their production and make you sound in a very stereotypic way, metal, with your bass, it's not going to serve you. So I recommend Coley's channel. If you're into metal production, especially if you play guitar, he's got some incredibly solid information and some great sonic tryouts and contrasts. Good, good stuff. And much like how we have to guide them out when they solo too long, or they just don't know when to stop on some things, when they start telling you how you need to handle your instrument and what technique you should be using to do your job, reach in, flip that blinker, just guide them back off into their own lane. When the guitars start giving you lessons on your own instrument, it's time to walk away. So, to wrap everything up, uh, I won't be doing a, a demo on the Mammoth. Uh, I think it's actually been covered pretty well. I don't know that I would have that much to add. Seems like a decent plug-in. I don't actually own it, so I can't really give much advice past that. But seems like it could be a decent tool. Uh, if you use it, let me know what you think below. And also hit me up in the comments and let me know, have you been through this? How many times have you had to put up with a band member who just doesn't know where their job stops? In any case, that's going to do it for this week. I'll see you next on the uh, tone video. Look forward to getting your comments on that and seeing what you think and what you come up with after we work with it. So until then, I'll see you on the next one.